Hi there, I'm David Hunt, owner of Game Masters Guild, and today, just when you thought your wallet was safe, well, WizKids introduced yet something else for their 4D Warlock Tiles line, and that is the Torture Chamber. So let's dive right into this gruesome little bit of yumminess and see what they got. Let's go! Okay, now just before we get started, I just want to say I'm sure WizKids doesn't condone it, nor do I condone torture in any shape or form. However, this set is strictly here to sort of set a scene and to perhaps make the bad guys more bad and more despicable. So I don't want you to think in any way, shape, or form that the fact that this set called the Torture Chamber in any way endorses that sort of behavior. Um, and a lot of these items were actually, this is actually, a lot of these items are actually historically accurate. Some of them were actually used back in medieval times and all throughout our history. And again, um, a lot of these things are very deplorable. And, but this is also something that in, in a role-playing game, when you use a setting with these devices, it's a way to amp up the tension and it gives your players perhaps a setting or a scene to uh, liberate people from. So don't think too deep into it, but I just want to let you know about that. But we're going to go ahead and move on, and uh, let's check out the torture chamber. All right, first thing up is the Iron Maiden. And this Iron Maiden right here, uh, it's completely pre-painted. All these are pre-painted. Opens up to reveal all the spikes inside. Pretty wild, uh, definitely, definitely painful if you were locked inside that. Move some room here, make sure I got plenty of room for everything. All right, coming up next, we have a Catherine wheel. And this actually spins, and the Catherine wheel, uh, it's got spikes on it, and someone would be strapped over it. And of course, this would be cranked, and they'd be pulled all across that. And you can see right there, there's the shackles, and they'd be pulled across that. Pretty, pretty, pretty gruesome as well. Now, here's something that's very interesting. I learned about this in one of my high school history classes, and this is the brazen bull. And trying to remember when it was I want to say Rome but I'm not sure but people were actually locked inside of these things and a fire was set underneath them and they would be slowly cooked and in the nostril the mouth would be open and the nostrils would be open so you could still hear the people inside really bad really bad stuff this right here is the pendulum now what I think is neat about this is it legitimately moves back and forth and you can even Roll the tab back and forth to get a little bit of effect there. Pretty neat. I like that. Very, very creative there on their thinking with that. Now we have the spiked chair. And a prisoner would be strapped in there and just made to basically just sit on the spiked chair. And as you can imagine, not very comfortable. Got a couple of cages. These things are huge. And what's neat is the floor pops off on both of them, just like that. And these cages are pretty big. You could even use them as either maybe people are being held prisoner, or perhaps these cages drop from the ceiling. And they are big enough to put a miniature in and capture them. Like right here, I'll put this my fighter right here, drop this cage on her. Definitely big enough to hold her. And I'm going to take a moment to adjust my camera here a little bit. There we go. That should be a little bit better. So as you can see, this miniature, this fighter is not included. But I just want to want you to see there for clarity the size of the cage. They're pretty big. And I like the fact that you actually put a miniature in them. It's just kind of cool. All right. Uh, just from a utility standpoint, from a gaming standpoint. All right, we're going to lock this cage down, and we're going to move on to some more cool some more cool stuff. We got a stocks. Very common, very common you would find. Uh, people would get in trouble, and for various crimes, they would be locked in stocks, sometimes just to keep them prisoner, or more than likely, in the town square, where people can berate them for the crimes, and then at such time, they'd be released after serving a sentence. Let's see. Here we have torture crosses. And essentially what would happen is these crosses are set up, these X's are set up in such a manner to where the person's arms would be set up right here and lashed down to these eyelets and just hung along the road as perhaps a uh, warning perhaps to other thieves or evildoers. 
or as punishment for a crime. I've got a pair of racks. And again, someone would be locked in there with their legs right there. And their arms would be locked in with the shackles. And the torturer would take the wheel and slowly tighten the wheel, stretching them on the rack. A lot of old horror movies, sometimes you see the rack. Sometimes it's mentioned. Here we got a, they call this a drowning trough. So basically, uh, whoever is doing the torturing would take someone and just hold their head underwater for a small amount of time until they almost couldn't breathe and then pull them back up and attempt to perhaps get information or Guinness punishment. All right, here we have uh, the hanging cages. Now there's two of these. And what's, what's neat about these cages, first of all, they give you they give you a lot of string to hang up the cages up with. And again, when I say neat, I mean from a perspective of miniature design and creation, not the actual device itself. Um, so there's plenty, plenty of string to hold it together. I noticed the string I had was kind of, I don't know if it had glue on it or something. It was kinked up really bad. I couldn't fix it. And it was really hard to thread through. And I didn't even bother threading it through this bottom eyelet here. But uh, you could use any thread to take care of that. And also what I found interesting with these, and I just on a whim tried to pop this open, and sure enough, the cage actually opens. Although I don't know what you'd actually put in there maybe. Uh, you could actually use this as like just a metal grate on the ground, and the cage, perhaps you could have the cage setting there, and then you could have the grate somewhere else, and maybe in a pit where maybe someone was trapped or like a manhole cover. But I'm not sure why they come off. I think it's just they designed it to come off just because it would be interesting to have a miniature do something other than be static. It's just kind of neat when things open and close, or like in this case, hang off a rope. And uh, this cage right here, you know, so it could be just kept a prisoner for a short amount of time or perhaps longer, maybe as a warning to, to bandits or pirates or who knows what. And again, this comes with two of them and these bases. And this whole thing is highly decorated. Uh, you see they've got all these rocks and got some bones and skulls down in, in the base. Pretty, pretty interesting, pretty gruesome, no doubt. And again, I say a lot of this stuff is awesome and cool. Um, in reality, it's not because it has a very, very dark history. But from a standpoint of miniature recreation and detail, uh, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. And they did a really good job at doing that. And again, we just have a, here we have a, just a real standard table. And let's take a look at the bad guys of this whole thing, the torturer and his assistant. And this is who the player is going to be up against when they come to rescue their allies from these guys. We also have two giant piles of chains that you can put anywhere. Got a couple, what is these, a couple fire bowls with some clear fire. These are really neat. Usually you see the brassers, which are on taller legs with some clear fire and the fire is really coming up high up high but here you've got these cool brass low brassers and you, you can see like the charcoal down in there and you can see the fire just low and I, these are really cool I really do like these these are pretty neat that's probably one of my favorite things of this because I'll get more use out of this than I will the Catherine wheel the brazen bull here we also have a couple torches on these uh, stands right here, a couple clear torches on stands, and we're just going to sit them right here. Oops. And then we have some surgical tools. We have some surgical tools right here, and uh, there's probably looks about, there's uh, about seven different tools, and I'm just going to set them right there on that table. Just a small little tray. You could even you could even possibly use them as a little extra stand-in tray for like thieves tools or maybe magic weapons the players find. And what's interesting is they've got all these miniatures and everything is listed on the back. However, in the photo, there's one extra miniature, a table with a bunch of straps on it. And I didn't see it in the description, and it's this one right here. And it makes me think of Dr. Frankenstein's table when he was building the monster, and the monster was strapped down with all these straps across his body and his 
it was strapped down right there and he used this wheel to stand the monster up now the table itself does not move but it itself is pretty cool and so this was a really unique piece and interesting that it got missed on the list and I really looked at it and I didn't see it so I think it's just a little typo but that's I believe this makes the 27th miniature but all in all again from WizKids they really did an excellent job uh, what's also interesting about this is there's a number of things that you can get in the unpainted line you can get the Iron Maiden you can get these chains and these cages, which actually, I believe a chain, a cage comes with one chain. So you can get the Iron Maiden, you can get the cages and the chains in the unpainted line. You can get these stocks in the unpainted line. You can also get the hanging cage by itself. You can get the rack by itself. You can even get a pair of these torture crosses in the Nolzers line. And what is all this going to cost you? Well, all this is going to cost you, set you back, only $49.99, 50 bucks. And if you break it down, uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Now this one, you can't get by itself in the Nolzers line, but right there, that's, that's 50 bucks already. So you're getting a lot of extra value as usual with the WizKids Warlock line or any of their stuff really but it's just neat that you can literally get almost half of this whole thing from just buying the unpainted Nolzers line that way you can pick and choose if you want to on all, all 50 bucks really good painted stuff looking great you can make your dungeon super gruesome by adding all this really crazy looking torture devices to it oh well I hope you enjoyed today's video Hopefully, I'll be putting out another one soon, as soon as I get out of this. Uh, but in the meantime, if you're ever in the shop or at your local FLGS, be sure to check out The Torture Chamber by WizKids. And add it to your collection. And uh, try not to get too caught up in it. I'm Dave Hunt, telling you to stay safe. Play Dread Games. And I'll see you real soon. Ah! <laughs>